I get seven o'clock, so we're going to get started. Um, welcome everybody that's here watching and to the rest of you folks here. Um, so I'm Dan Conger, and this is Wednesday Wind Down with Dan and friends. It's a webinar slash podcast slash YouTube channel that's for frustrated hikers that can't get outside because of uh, shelter re restrictions and other reasons. So I can't get together with my friends and drink beer or talk the outdoors, so we're doing it online. So I'm Dan Conger, and tonight I'm drinking a Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. Doug, you're up next. Introduce yourself uh, and your, your beverage. I'm uh, Doug Grover. I'm drinking a Stella Midnight. Ooh, okay. Yeah, I've never heard of that. Dave, how about you? Uh, Dave Cowan, and I have a Razor 5 IPA. And that saves the grumpy old man for last. And I'm Jim Kurtz, and I have a Sculpin. Beautiful. Mm. All right. Fantastic. Well, thank, thank you guys for being here. If you did this 35 years ago, Dan, it would have been like, yeah, I got the Kroger special. Oh, yeah, I got the name, the, the thing that's the blue beer on oh, the it. Blue, the blue um, bar yeah. that says, yeah, beer. We've nice. all managed to, to move up a little bit. Okay. Well, that's, I mean, what, what uh, Moosehead and Anchor Steam were like, oh, my God, oh, yeah. it was the greatest thing ever. So You were splurging. So, Today we're going to talk about uh, phone apps that you might take out on the trail. So what we've done is I've made everybody do a little bit of work for us before they come on this. Sometimes, like last week, Sandra was on and we were just chatting about food, right? We did, we did a little bit, of re little bit of work, but everybody here had to do some work and do some screen recording. So we recorded some of our trail apps in use, and what we're going to do is, is talk about them. So I'm going to share my screen, and then we're going to start with Dave. So I'm going to go to my share my screen, and... Dave, the first thing I have up here is um, the camera. Before we get into Gaia, could you talk about how you use your cam your phone camera on the trail? Yeah, sure. I uh, I used to go hiking with some guys that would carry pounds and pounds of of SLR gear for digital, and I was never willing to do that. So I had a little point and shoot camera, and then uh, then I had a digital point and shoot, and then eventually the camera phones got, got good enough so that I just use the phone that's on my iPhone or the camera for me that's on my iPhone. And, you know, most nature photography doesn't require uh, a lot of zooming in. It's more general vistas, at least the sort of stuff that I'm thinking about. So, um, so I just use the, use it as it, as it came from Apple itself. Uh, although there are things like uh, moment lenses you can put on these aftermarket things mm -hmm. that'll click on their own, specific case that'll allow you to make a telephoto lens or a wide angle lens. And I think I've heard there's also a zoom. Is that right, Jim? There's a zoom lens as well? No, no. telephoto okay. and, and wide telephoto angle. Telephoto and wide angle, okay. So, uh, and I have seen the results of those and they look pretty good considering they're just something you're slapping just literally right. on the end of, your, right. end of your phone, but they seem to work pretty well. And what's interesting, and Doug and I had this conversation earlier about what's really made the camera and all apps feasible now is the advent of a lightweight or compact and relatively cheap uh, battery backups. So, Absolutely. Right. So, it, you know, if it was solar panels or, you know, you're only get a day out or a day or two out of your phone, well, th then this doesn't make sense. But if we can get a week out of a phone with a battery backup, man, that's, at, you know, at a, at a six or eight out, six or eight ounce uh, weight penalty, that, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, in fact, uh, yeah, the, the the thinking used to be that I that I heard about and followed was get a camera that has double A so you can swap them out. Right, right. So you can always get fresh batteries because double A's are easily bought anywhere. If it is a custom battery, then you had a problem. But now that you have a chart, you have a battery backup, and they all have a micro USB connector. You just slap it in and you're good to go again. And, and I've extended that now to my headlamp. I've got a rechargeable headlamp that works with a. Uh, uh, micro USB and put it on my same thing on my battery brick if I'm out for a week. Cool. Or so let's jump into to Gaia. So can you give us a, just a just a brief overview before we jump into our little video? Yeah. So Gaia is um, essentially a fully functional GPS that is on your phone because all phones have GPS chips built into them now for the 911 calls or whatever. And the chip, the newer chips chipsets are accurate enough that they can. They can get a fix rather quickly. Um, they take up very little space. It isn't as accurate as a standalone GPS, 
uh, because they can put a much better antenna in there, but it's accurate enough for hiking purposes. Um, you can pretty much tell where you are on a trail or if it's putting, telling you you're slightly off of a trail, you can, you know, it's sort of like the way that the car phones work for driving. It okay. snaps you to the road. You can sort of do that in your own head. So, okay. uh, so the video that I shot and I picked this because it was rated the best when I decided to get a, I was going to get a new GPS and then I thought about it and well, if I get, get a phone app, then I have one less thing I have to carry. So I decided to go with that. And this was one of the best rated ones I had. True that. And the, and the little video that I made, uh, I essentially, there's no audio on it, but I tapped, I went through, you can see the main screen and I was tapping the buttons from the top down just so you could quickly see all of the different uh, things that there are. Well, let's, we're, we're going to fire it up so we can take a look at that and just, if you need me to stop, shout out and I will, we'll stop it. Okay. So yeah, here's the screen recording the top level. That's a, just a search bar. Uh, not the best functionality with it. The next one in will hide that top row and re-expose it if you tap the button down below. Uh, and then the center button is how to find your position. It'll center your position and then you can change it to north up. Uh, then comes the next button, which is where you can download maps and record tracks and everything that it says there. Just tap on the, the appropriate thing. So I did a quick tap for downloading maps. It just comes up with something. You fill out the space you want. Hit save and it'll take it uh, and it'll start downloading it. Um, let's see what, what's coming up next, Dave. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> ah, okay. So the next button is the map sources. I use USGS mostly, but these are all easily available and free on there. So uh, some of them are better, uh, but they don't have as much uh, topo information. So the next series of buttons down below that starts with a green record button. All of those are user selectable. So you've, if you push and hold, you can decide what what you want in that row and in that particular button. So I was just tapping through to show that you can change all of these things. What, and I usually have the record button on so I can start a track when I want it, and I use uh, you know use it as it's written up there. And then so what what's the most common settings that you use on your record? Uh, well, you just just record. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, so, so it's just record. These, these other settings are things that it'll show you. Like if you're walking a specific direction, it'll tell you the course that you're walking. Mm -hmm. The third one over is telling you, I leave it set on GPS coordinates. Um, and this is if after tapping record to, to show what it does. Uh, I, I clicked on into the trip and it just starts giving you all this information, which is not useful when you're just walking five feet, but over time it'll give you a whole bunch of stuff. And, and that stuff is, is, well, part of it's exportable. You can export the GPX track and recreate it on, on Caltopo or something else. So you could see your elevation profile if you wanted to make sure that you, like, wow, that seemed hard. You could say, well, yeah, yeah. that's because, because we climbed 2,000 feet in the last hour. Exactly. And, uh, and on the top right of that screen is the GPS accuracy. And you can see this wasn't all that good. I was sitting under some trees at 47 feet. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, even that's plenty accurate for, for hiking. Uh, the next button that over was this discover button and it basically will take you into to hikes that are nearby you. I think you use your GPS and calls their servers if you're online. And then after that, I went to the save, um, the, the saved button. And these are the various things that you can opt for it to show you your waypoints, your, your tracks, your routes. Um, and then, uh, after Sorry, that, I backed it up on you. There we go. Okay. Okay, so the, so you you say the waypoints, maps. Yeah, so you can click, you can work your way through as, as a, a way of doing hierarchy, and you can stash things in folders. Uh, I'm much too lazy to do that. I usually just use like a date stamp and some sort of a name for whatever it is uh, and try and keep it organized that way. Okay. So, uh, but that's, you know, whatever people want to do. And then uh, after that is the settings button, and there's a few important things in here like the units, uh, tab, which allows you to change from, from metric to imperial or what coordinate system you're going to use. Uh, and you can see I'm set for UTM, but I think it clicks on, I think I click on that in the video and you can just see it. You can swap things around. Okay. And the other thing is that you need to make sure you have, uh, the same, if you're using paper maps, you want to have the same map datum. Mm, uh, that could really throw things yeah. off. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and yeah, that's a, that's essentially it. It's just a, a good full featured, um, GPS. 
Nice. That is one less thing that you have to carry. It's like saves you six ounces of, of ex another battery and everything else. Now, now previously you had used um, a, a full size, a regular size GPS a dedicated as well. Yeah, I had the GPS, I can't remember what it was, uh, Garmin GPS map or something like that. No, it wasn't the map. It was the pre-map because I always had a paper map. So I was like, I just want the coordinates. I'll transfer it over. Sure. And, you know, the screen was always too small and, and they didn't have the resolution. They didn't have one to 24 scaling on those. That, that, was, that was the biggest ch challenge when I used a, a, a Garmin with a map. It wasn't, wasn't one to 24 and, and the screen was too small. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, so it's a huge scale and a small screen, not a great combination. And okay. with the phone, you can do one to 24 and you can just keep zooming in until it's all pixelated if you want. So okay. it works yeah. out pretty well. Thanks, Dave. Yep. Uh, Doug's up next. So, Doug, I had asked Doug for, he's going to talk about events, but I'd asked about some other apps that you use, and your response was, I really don't. So, but I thought that was a good perspective, right? To say, kind of say how you use your phone or don't use your phone in the trail, and kind of if you could talk, talk to that for a moment. Uh, once or twice a year, I hike with a, a collection of folks for a week in the Grand Canyon. And, uh, on every trip, somebody, everybody else has either a DSLR or a, or a smartphone. And I'm the Luddite, I have nothing. Wait, I take it back. I'm the guy who carries the extra pots for baking. Right. But, uh, so, but, but coming back to the issue of, of you know, what we do, what we used to use in the past, I use one of these, it's a Garmin GPS Map 60 CSX. I'd used this for 15 years wow. uh, yeah. before I used Avenza, which we're going to talk about earlier, uh, talk about next. So uh, standalone GPS receiver works great. If I'm hiking out on the desert and I'm far away from the car and I really absolutely need a GPS to make sure I can get back to my car, I'm going to take the, the Garmin. I'm not going to rely on my smartphone. Okay. Uh, Garmin's more reliable. There we go. Okay. But anyway, let's talk about the future. The Avenza, right? the future. Every Everything is, everything is on smartphones now. True. So what I started using this last year was uh, Avenza. And in a nutshell, Avenza allows you to take geospatial PDF files, like a regular topo file from either USGS or a file that, uh, you, have, a file that you would have constructed in CalTOPO. So no, I, I want to, I got a question for you that, that I think is important. So, so you said a geospatial PDF. So, so it's a so is it a p it's to to clarify it's a PDF that's referenced against some ground datum some some coordinates. Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. So USGS puts them in in I think most most of their recent uh, files that you can download from their site, and CalTOPO can can do either geospatial PDF or JPEG, and I always use uh, geospatial PDF. Oh, so you just referenced CalTOPO and using it with the Venza. So you can yes. bring CalTOPO maps into a Venza. Yes. Interesting. Okay, great. Well, let's, let's, um, let's run, the, let's run your, your recording and see what, see what we're going to talk about. Again, shout out if you need me to pause. So that's what I've done here. We've got three that we'll talk about today, three maps that I created in CalTOPO. So the first one is a Wonderland Trail. Uh, some friends of mine are talking about doing this trail, and so I said, hey, I can construct this map in CalTOPO because I've got the license to generate big maps, and then all you guys can do is load it on your phones, and the app is free, and I'll give you the map. So uh, we'll see. So just in general, this map is 48 inches by 48 inches if you were printed. So it's 24, 24K, 24K scaling with 40-foot contours, which is the standard kind of topo map people use. So here we're zooming in to the beginning and the end of the trail. And all I've done on this is I used the CalTOPO map and I added the trail in red and I added mile marks with red dots and I added campsite locations uh, with little campsite icons. So what, what, what's useful for the people on the trail is it's, it looks just like a map. It's as easy to use as a map and it's the easiest way to find out where you are on the trail or even the easiest place to find out where you are on your paper map if it's the same map. Now, one of the things I noticed about, I, I started playing with the Venza and CalTOPO, the combination of those two, and I have an, a moderately upgraded license, not the same license that you and Dave have, and my maps were considerably smaller. So I could see a real um, 
benefit of having a full license to be able to get the to download the full size PDF because I think mines were they weren't eight and a half by eleven when they were probably the next size up because I think I only have the twenty dollars subscription. Yeah, so, it's like eleven by seventeen or yeah, thirteen by nineteen yeah. or something so like that. So yeah, I had to be really careful and and I remember years ago making the mistake of of having the map just where I was hiking, but I couldn't see what was just off the map and then you couldn't navigate when you with what you can't see. Yep. And and if you if you want to just use CalTopo for free, you can generate your own maps that are eight and a half by eleven. And if right. your hike is a little bit longer, you can just create multiple maps and load them on your phone. Okay. So here's another example of a uh, map, which is basically a hiking brochure from the Grand Canyon. So this is not a topo map, but it is a geospatial PDF. So this is the rim to rim to rim hike. And it has useful things on it that you might not see on your topo map. So it has all of the references that, that the park service rangers will refer to, all of the restrooms, and it's got the bottom of the trail. So if you were running Avenza with this map loaded on your phone, and again, this map is free, um, there would be a blue dot at your location. And as you hike, that blue dot would just move to show you where you are on your map. And I actually find the, the combo of CalTopo and Avenza quite powerful because I'll print a map and I'll load the exact same map on, on my phone. And it's the easiest way to locate where I'm at on my map. Yeah, so the, the ability to have a paper map that you can put your finger on and lay it on the ground and show somebody else and a screen confirming exactly where you are. I, I agree. And that's the way I used to use my physical GPS and a paper and a printed paper map. So, so here's a final example of uh, Bernardo Mountain near Lake Hodges. And this is doing a track. So there are a lot of features in Avenza, not as much as, as others like uh, uh, CalTopo's app or like Gaia. Uh, but it's easy to, you can put in your own tracks and save them. You can plot the elevation profiles and speed profiles, et cetera. Very cool. And I'm sure there are a lot of other features <laughs> that the Avenza folks are saying, wait, 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 ours does all those other things. Those other tools do as well. <laughs> so this is one of those things that I was telling you, I'm only giving you four to five minutes for each one of you guys to get through this. And we had to, we had to understand that this is just super high level, right? These are like, here's some cool com things that this can do. You got to, this is not, how to use any of these components. So. There's yeah, my, dozens, my, if not hundreds of videos out for every one of these apps that'll delve into those things. Cool. My, my main pitch for Avenza is use CalTopo to construct a map, print that map, load the same map into Avenza, and it's the easiest way to find out where you are on your paper map. Cool. Jim, you're up. So before you talk about EarthMate, you're gonna tell us a little bit about GutHooks. You said that's a, an app that you use. Right, Gut Hooks is a is an app for long trails. Um, he's done trails all over the world. I used the one. The first one I used was the John Muir Trail. He had that one built, and then I did the since I do a section or two sections every year of the PCT. I bought that app, and so um, I use it every year. It shows um, everything. I now. I'm belt and suspenders. I always carry paper maps with me. Um, and when you were talking about GPSs, um, I upgraded to the Garmin Oregon uh, only because it's a touch screen and I can move it around easier. Mm -hmm. But I, I do the same thing. When I go out in the desert or when I go up in the snow, I don't just rely on my, on my phone. I take a standalone GPS. Okay. So, but uh, Gut Hooks is, uh, is his trail name. Is, is, uh, his real name is Ryan Lynn, I think, uh, from the East Coast. And, and he, uh, he came along after Half Mile. Okay. Uh, Half Mile had done the PCT uh, trail maps and then came out with an app. And then Gut Hook uh, came out with a, with a, a better version. I'm going to open up the EarthMate video and you can um, narrate and tell us what, what you were doing with, with EarthMate. Okay, so um, this is uh, used to be uh, owned by Delorme. Garmin bought it and Garmin uh, owns EarthMate and InReach now. So all of the maps are the Garmin uh, topo maps. Uh, so if if you look at this one, this was 
uh, looking down at the bottom of the screen, um, uh, at the very bottom, it's kind of cut off, but uh, map message tracking uh, is shown. Can you go back on that, Dan? Okay, so, oh, or not. One more. There we go. Okay, so, so this is the map function, and it's down at the bottom, it's showing you your, uh, what speed you're traveling at, the heading, what your elevation is, and then down below that, it's showing what the coordinates are. Um, if you let the, the uh, video go to the next step, I move the coordinates over. By moving the map over, it gives you map center. And so it, it, uh, it's showing you, you can get a coordinate for another location from that map. Okay. 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 So now this is the second one. This is messages. So the, the real reason for me having the, the Garmin inReach is so I can use two-way messaging. It will text and email from satellite. Uh, this has gone through. I've clicked up at the top to, to write a message up here at the top on the right-hand side. If you go to uh, the little icon, it will bring up, it's uh, running a little fast for me. There you go. Sorry. It will bring up my contacts. So if you, you only get 160 characters. If you pre-build the database with, with your contacts, um, any of these that you click on, it doesn't cost you any characters. If you type someone's address in there, um, that will go against your 160 characters. So I always pre-build, make sure I have everything built before I go on a hike. So I can just click on the icon. It takes me to the address book. I click on who I want to send it to. And then down at the bottom is where you type. So I, I want to take this moment to kind of, to let everybody know, this is, there's a, a, an enormous discussion and an enormous body of gnashing and wailing um, uh, about uh, satellite messengers versus um, PLBs, PL, PLBs, PLBs personal locator beacons. And it's a tremendous, it's a tremendous state. Make sure you have a good drink because it's, it's entertaining. Now we well, may talk, we may talk about that in a separate one, but there are pros and cons. And for, for you, I think you said real briefly, you said the messaging was the most, the two way messaging was really important to you. Correct. That probably that drove you to this. That's the only way I get a hall pass that long. <laughs> okay. That's it. I got so, you. So my wife thinks I'm out there being attacked by bears every night if I don't contact her. Okay. And so um, I started out with a spot. And the one problem with the spot is it doesn't tell you uh, when it has successfully transmitted a message. Uh, they, they may have fixed that by now. Correct. Yeah. And, and the newer versions, but I had version. Version sure. one, okay. and they, they have much much newer versions. They have at that, least three or four. That was a that wasn't a device issue. That was a satellite issue. Yeah. No, it, it's a no. device issue because it would not tell you if it did connect to the satellite. So, Jim, is this is this the, some of your tracks? Is that what we're seeing yeah. here in different places? So this places? is this is the next one at the bottom. This is tracking, okay. and I can I can set it from to leave a breadcrumb anywhere between ten minutes and every four hours. So when I go on a long hike, I set it for, I found battery usage, 20 minutes is about the best. Okay. So I'll leave a breadcrumb and there's a, uh, a uh, Garmin uh, database where they store your maps. If you give someone that the email address mm -hmm. or the, the IP address, and the password, they can log in and see your progress. Okay. And so um, I, I do that uh, for friends like when Dave can't come along, I do it to just make his life miserable. Perfect. Yeah. Beautiful. Right Cheers Oops. to that. So this, this was the last screen, and this is, this is uh, uh, more. And so what it does is it, it gives you a, 
all of your if different things, options, things you can set. Uh, this was just telling me that I am, I am the device is connected, and uh, I clicked on check for new messages from this screen. It'll go ahead and check. Okay, nice. And so if I had a track running, it would show all of the track info down below it. How long have you been using um, your your inReach? The inReach is the companion hardware that goes with the app. Is that that's accurate? Correct. And okay. I'm on my third generation of inReach. I had the original Delorme inReach. Um, I I switched to the the first Garmin uh, inReach, and now I'm on the inReach Mini. Okay. Uh, this was another feature in there: is you can get real time. Uh, weather forecast up to I think it's three days uh, for your location, or if you have coordinates, it can give you another location weather report. Very cool, and I find that very helpful. Awesome, thank you. Yep. Well, I told you guys time is going to go by quick, so I've got just a couple minutes to to go over mine. So my the adapt the app that I just started using and I'm really liking is CalTopo. And so we, we talked about that in a previous show, the, the desktop or, or you know, PC-based, but they also have an app. And as I remember, the app is free, and it dovetails right in with my subscription. And there's some similarities between this and some other and several other apps. But what I, what I really like about it is, since I'm very familiar with CalTopo, the learning curve was really short. And the synchronizing of my subscription maps in this map is relatively easy as well. So what I'm thinking I'm going to try in this summer on my summer trip is not bring my altimeter barometer compass. What, right. I like that. If, if I Hopefully I got a summer trip. So yeah. if I have a summer trip, I, I'm going to try leaving my altimeter barometer compass watch at home because I can get the elevation. I can get my location from this. And actually I use my ABC mainly to figure out my elevation to then determine my location. So, so that's CalTopo is my, one of those apps that I kind of like. And then I'm going to show you a peak finder, which is, which is kind of, it's just more fun than I think it is useful. Um, so, so first thing is this is a horizontal app. So you always take photos and video. We always take video in uh, uh, landscape mode, never portrait, please. Um, so it starts off as a wireframe image of the landscape we're looking at. But where it really comes alive is when we turn the camera. So here I turn on the camera, and now I'm bringing up the San Pasqual Valley. And I can drag this wireframe of these mountains and line it up as close as I can. Now I can see Stanley Peak, and I don't even know where Tombstone Peak is. I do know Bottle Peak. So I can, I can identify these high points. So I use this a lot on day hikes. I have no, anyone know where Gordon Point is? I've never heard of it. Nope. Um, and then I think I need to move this guy over here. So um, I want you to watch on the right-hand side. So you see right next to Crane's Peak, that yellow line at 6, 612, that means the sun is going to come over that ridge at 612 a.m. Here's the benefit. You're going to sight where your tent goes. You want to be in the shade longer. You want to be in the sun first. It's cold. You want to be in the sun first thing. You know where it's going to be. It's going to be coming right over that location and then the arc where it sets. So I kind of think that's a, a nice um, thing that's in here. Um, so that was, I think that was worth. The other thing, now I need to move my, the other thing that we have is these are other visible high points, uh, the elevation and their bearings as well. And then here's the other things that are available is um, settings and coverage map. This is available offline. So you have to download some of this information before. So um, I'm going to see if we have any questions in here because I've got like two minutes left. Um, any recommendations on battery packs? What, what y'all think? Anchor. An yeah. Exactly. Anchor. Anchor's Anchor's anchor. 10,000 or 20,000 milliamp hours. That'll work. I I have three of them. I have a like a four thousand, a ten thousand, and a twenty thousand. Okay. So the the four thousand goes on just weekend trip. The the ten thousand goes on one week trip, and if it's over a week, then the twenty thousand. Because the twenty thousand is is close to fourteen, sixteen ounces. It's pretty yeah. pretty pretty big. Right. It's a yeah. real brick. Yeah. Yeah. I started off with the with the twenty thousand for work and. 
was charging it once a season <laughs> for work yeah. and the, and the 10,000 I charge once a month and it's still, but it goes to my work backpack. And then one last question is for Gaia, uh, do you pay the annual fee or is there a good functionality without that? Mm, good question. So I actually don't know because I paid the one time lifetime membership fee and Genius. then they grandfathered me in. Well, no, they changed their subscription model or to a subscription model and they grandfathered me in for five years. Oh, five so, years. Oh, yeah. Not they gave me five, five years. years. Like, hey, you had it for a lifetime, but mm, we'll give you five years. Change so, nine. Yeah. So, so Dave, I, I haven't Dave, looked because I'm, I'm on like year three. So right. <laughs> here it comes. I don't know yet. <laughs> here it comes. I want to hear what Jim's going to say. Well, I was going to say they've estimated your lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> the, the actuarial said cheers oh, yeah, this guy oh yeah he'll be done in four we'll give him five yeah there you go uh, okay well, with that we're out of time uh, i want to thank gentlemen i want to thank you very much for for joining me and doing your, your homework before you came in um thank you dan absolutely so next so um, sometime tomorrow I'll have this up on YouTube. So if you missed it or if you missed previous episodes, it's always on YouTube within a day or so. Uh, so those people not watching, remember yes. tomorrow it'll be up there. <laughs> Wait a minute. I don't yeah. understand that. Um, next week, uh, next week I'm going to have, um, Yasina on and we're going to talk about uh, a Ray Lakes uh, trip that she, she took. She's going to share some information about that. Another one. travelogue type thing? Another travelogue, right? Nice. That good. Ray Lake sounds like a very attainable trip. I think she came in over uh, over Kearsarge, so it came in and then went out. As opposed to, I've done the loop before, so it sounds like sounds like a, a very uh, accessible trip for a lot of folks. So, so I actually bumped into a ranger who did exactly that. Yeah. She was on. She was like a uh, door ranger or whatever, and she had her three days off. So she's like, "Oh, I'm just going in." Perfect. And I bumped into her on the way out. What was what was the Rhodes End was the other way. Rhodes right. End. That's the Western approach. Yeah. And right. I did that. I did that. Cheers all. Thanks so much. All right. Thank Take you. Take care. Dan. All Take right. Take care, everybody. See you next week.